Hi, y'all. It's Kate from Katie Did. It's winter time, and so I'm not out wandering the rivers. Um, so I thought, let's talk about rocks. The first really cool fact that I want to tell, tell you is 300 BC was this guy called Theophrastus, and Theophrastus was the first one to use the word agate as in reference to some Chalcedony type rocks. It was uh, actually along the Akate River in a place called Sicily. That's where the word agate comes from. I just think that's super cool. The Montana agate, which is what I collect, that story starts millions and millions of years ago. The, the range of the numbers that I found was anywhere from 10 million to 85 million years old. And the reason I think that there is such a disparity, such a difference, is because they've been being formed over millions and millions of years. So we're going to go way back in time and we're going to talk a little bit about how the agates were formed. So let's go back 10, 20, 25 million years ago, back to Montana. Uh, you've seen Montana from my videos, if nothing else, you see that it's a lovely place with lots of beautiful scenery. But back then, Montana was wild and fierce and fiery. There were volcanoes, there was a line of volcanoes stretching a hundred miles, and it was erupting with lava and ash clouds, and it was just kind of nasty. Um, not some place that you would want to build a summer cabin. And so the lava was just bubbling out of these volcanoes hundreds of miles long. And when they would form, when the lava would form, then gas bubbles would get trapped in the lava. And it would form these bubbles that were within the hardened rock. Well, the little tiny cracks in the lava allowed the gas to escape. That just left these big cavities in the lava. And so then, because the ash was all up in the air and it was kind of making acid rain and all this nasty stuff, uh, it would then precipitate, it would rain down on the lava. And since the gas had escaped, then the water would kind of seep into the lava. It would, it would then fill these holes with this really silica rich water. And so eventually what would happen then as the silica sat is that it would form a gel on the outside of the bubble. And um, this, this gel then would kind of sit there and get thicker and thicker and thicker, and eventually it would harden. It hardened in what's called a cryptocrystalline structure. Cryptocrystalline means that it's so small that it, you can just almost barely see it with a microscope. It's just really, really tiny crystal structure. The gel was basically filled with pure anhydrous silica. Um, and that hardened into a material that ranged from white to yellow to gray to black uh, in this in this bubble. So the cycle then continued over and over and over again with the, the bubble or what was left of the bubble filling with silica and the gel forming and creating these layers of, of silica that are you know kind of growing inward and it created what we know as chalcedony. Um, so chalcedony is the name, a name for a special kind of quartz. It's also what agates are made from. This is really cool. So remember we had the, the silica gel that was lining and filling the cavities? What would happen is that other minerals, manganese and iron mostly, would seep in along with the silica. And the, because they are a different composition, they had a different color and so they would kind of creep through the gel and blossom and make these beautiful feathery patterns. Uh, the manganese is what is largely responsible for the black kind of uh, tree-like structures in agates and iron is mostly the, the brown banding, but they both have the same basic process. They flowed through the silica gel before it was hardened. And I always kind of wonder, wow, how did this even happen? Because, you know, rock is hard, so you don't expect this blossoming thing to be able to happen inside a hard rock. So it makes perfect sense to me that it happened before it was completely hardened. I think that's really neat. The, the tree-like structures, by the way, are called dendrites. And that is also from the Greek. It means tree-like, so that's cool. These 
tree-like things or these ribbons. All of the stuff that's within the Montana agate are actually called inclusions. Uh, it just means that there's been minerals that have gotten in there. So we ended up then with this bubble. It's encased in lava, which is actually turned into rhyolite. Um, and then the agate nodules inside are hardened chalcedony with whatever inclusions they have in them. Um, and over eons, geologic time is so crazy, it's like so long. Uh, over millions of years then, the rhyolite has eroded away and the agates are harder, much harder. And so they remain, those nodules, these, these pockets remain intact. And if you look at the outside of them, they have kind of a, a snaky, bumpy sort of texture on them that they almost look like. They almost look like snakeskin or some kind of leathery surface. And the reason for that is because on the inside of the bubbles that they were formed in was literally like foam, foam from the lava. And so the, the texture of these agates is actually because there was foamy bubbles on the outside of the gas bubble, and it then formed that pattern on the agates. Um, a YouTuber named Thirst Fast pointed this out to me, and I have been jazzed about it ever since. So thanks, TF. The agate was formed, the rhyolite wore away. So we're left then with the agate nodule. Rivers rose and fell, and they carried the agates along with them. There were great glaciers that grew and shrank, and they pushed the agate along with other stones in front of them. So now we've got all these agates along with all of the other rocks that were uh, kind of carried along with the glaciers and created with all of this volcanic activity. And they spread from their source on the eastern edge of the Yellowstone Park to hundreds of miles north, south, and east. Hundreds of miles. I mean, you can find agates, Montana agates, in Minnesota. You can find them up in Canada. You can find them down south. I had somebody tell me that they found them in Texas. I'm not sure they actually spread that far, but there certainly are dendritic agates in Texas. So today in Montana, you can find moss agates in almost every county from in southeastern Montana, uh, from Billings all the way over to Sydney. You know, you can find these gorgeous stones peeking out of gravel beds or along the riverbanks or in the hillsides, um, even up to 30 miles from the river on either side. Because it floods and the ice is formed and the ice breaks and it digs into the hillsides every, every winter, every spring, um, new material from these gravel banks is gouged out every single year. And so there's lots of new stuff every year. Uh, plenty of great things still to be found, even though we've been collecting for a really long time. Um, so if you are in Montana, think about taking a stop along the Yellowstone and seeing if you can find one of these awesome agates. Find a 25 million year old souvenir. You might even find me and my dog along the riverbank looking for agates. If you do, be sure to say hi. This is Kate from Katie Did. Keep on doing.